Kathy Campbell. How are you today? Hi, Alex Cox. How are you? <laughs> well, I feel like there's, I must be, I like have extra juice in me or something because I sound really perky and I'm really tired. So maybe I should stop drinking this third Diet Coke that I'm on. Oh, well, it depends on your goals. Mm. Uh, I mean, interesting, interesting. What what do you anticipate my goals for today would be? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing successfully finish the day out and maybe mm-hmm, go to sleep mm-hmm. at some point. Maybe. Perhaps. Yeah. Probably. Ugh. So I wanted to do a show with you for a long time, um, but then I kept getting busy and then eventually <laughs> you were like, what if I did all of the work though? And... <laughs> Then yeah. I was like, that would be a good a good thing. And then um I was like, but what about the 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 premise? And then you decided on the premise and here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of um forced you into this <laughs> by saying, Hey, I've done this and I bought the domain and look, I've made all our social media accounts and here are the logins and and, and let's do this. <laughs> Well, I mean, I always say that I don't that that really podcasts are just a way for my friends to actually talk to me because otherwise, you know, I mean, I I guess we'll get to my social hierarchy of messages (laughs) later, but it's it's a little bit it's I don't know. But I, I you are you are almost opposite to me in every way but I just love you so dearly and want to talk to you all the time and it's kind of fascinating to me I am so happy that you feel the same way because I feel the same way about you and so I listen to all of your shows because I am like yay I get to have her in my ears (laughs) when I can and that I will text you random thoughts I have about those shows uh, and then not hear back. And for a while, I was just like, oh, oh, gosh, I'm bothering her. I'm bugging her. I, I do this a lot. I like force my friendship on people whether they want it or not. And so receiving confirmation that that was OK. I think was specifically good. I said, well, and I, I was at like I was going to a convention or something and I tweeted like hey I'm here please say hi but please be gentle (laughs) I I won't I was like I'm sorry I definitely won't make eye contact with you like I I often record uh shows with people in the same room and I just I just don't make eye contact with them and and normally I can say oh it's because I'm monitoring the levels but um for one of my shows Dubai Friday we have an engineer in the studio now so I just am like yes I'm looking at the show notes ah I don't want (laughs) to I don't want to look anyone in the eye. But um, and then you had this thing where uh, and and that's the thing you said, oh, God, I'm so sorry if I'm one of those people. Whereas if I saw that, I would just immediately assume that someone someone was subtweeting me and that I was terrible and then I would hate myself. But then you (laughs) vocalized it and it was and I'm like, no, 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 this is absolutely you never bother me. And I like to tell people like there's no way you can bother me and if you are I probably won't tell you I'll just mute you <laughs> <laughs> which is good to know yeah especially because like uh, in that conversation of that making eye contact I like to make eye contact with the person that I am talking to to acknowledge them like that I'm paying attention to them and reaffirming that I am like mm-hmm involved in the conversation but I also am more than willing to if that I I see how that can make people uncomfortable and so when I learned that you prefer to not make eye contact I was just like okay what can I do to make you comfortable because I'm (laughs) a helper and I can't help myself not helping (laughs) <laughs> That's true. You can't help helping. But and and even when you uh I I was on your delightful show Friends in Your Ears and uh you you sent a list of questions and you're like, "Hey, I know that you get anxious if you don't want to go first. I totally understand." And I was like, "Wow, no one has ever even <laughs> considered that question before." And uh if 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 it, if I was to say perhaps that I have a personal brand, uh it would be that <laughs> I'm not brand. Good lord. Ugh. Uh it would be that I'm not great at humaning too well. 
Uh, and it was well, just that's why you're a robot. Nice, I mean, I, I th- th- that's also the premise of uh, the show a little bit is th- it only exists because we like each other. And also, I have just so much to learn from you as a human. And we're not like tons of years apart, but you have so much more life experience than me because you are a unicorn and you have done so many interesting things and you've taken so many risks that I have never even considered taking. And yeah. you like work for yourself and it's amazing and i just go on and on it's it it boggles my mind the amount of stuff that you get done well and i'm just like dude she's so cool because like i i know see you gotta okay we're gonna have a rule though you can't deny when i compliment you But what if it is, like, factually incorrect? Like, right now I'm in a very warm room and I'm I'm very hot right now. (laughs) Boo. I know. Oh, God. Okay. It's just too warm. Spock. (laughs) I don't even understand that reference. Literal, like, the logical uh, definition of cool means that you're you're chilly and the room I'm in is hot. Yeah, No. No, you knew what I meant when you said you're cool. Hush. <laughs> even, even that, it's like uh, every, everything's sub- subjective. And yes. uh, I, that's a thing humans have is subjectivity and bias. And uh, yes, that's very true. I, I'm, I would not consider myself cool, especially not in this situation um, of being alive but also sitting in this small room and it's oh it's just so warm that's how much i like you i'm sitting in a warm room and i will be sitting in a warm room for like an hour recording this yeah yay i heart you too the the most exciting thing about recording my face during a podcast is going to be to see how often i blink because I have no concept of it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm like, I, I realized I did a podcast where we did a um, a video in it so that we could have, because we were telling story time. We played Fiasco, basically, and it was delightful. But we did a video recording for it. And I realized how much I touched my mm, face. Yeah, I need to be careful so that it doesn't trigger or like block the video part of it and if people want to see what video we're talking about where can they find it uh on the (laughs) the youtube on the yeah i maybe igtv wow that's such a we will try what a (laughs) what a way to say uh oh oh i got it ready ready check our twitter account Robot Unicorn <laughs> FM for links to where things will be. How's that? <laughs> We're off to a great start. A great start. So great. Especially since I don't even know where the podcast will be hosted. Like other than at un- Robot Unicorn FM dot com. Like we know oh, that. Do, right? do, do we have the URL? <gasps> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's dude. very exciting. I bought it. Oh, man. Yes. Wow, in in this secret video, my ears are moving a lot, and I don't know how that's happening. I'm very excited by it, though. Bleep, 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 uh, bleep. Is it eyebrow related? Uh, no, no. Oh, oh, it's oh, glare related. Mm. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my ears move oh. with my eyebrows. Man, this is great radio content. <laughs> well, it just means that people need to go check out mm-hmm. other things. That's that's why. Uh, yeah. So wh- why are we so, recording a podcast? That's a very good question that I ask myself every day. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's also because you're kind of oh, awesome. No. Oh, no. It's starting already. Yeah. Mm, no. Yeah. It no. totally is. Uh, mm-hmm. Be forewarned. This unicorn will pronounce how awesome that robot is constantly since I have a feeling the robot has a hard time saying it herself. So that's my job is to say how awesome the robot is. Sorry, not sorry. Well, 
I, I know a very special, wonderful unicorn, and I just wanted to do a podcast with her because we get to talk all the time on the internet, but not with our real, you know, vocal cords. And it's always exciting to do that. Oh. Right. It, no, it's very true, especially since I know that you will reply. <laughs> <laughs> I I wonder on that. That's the thing. I have sort of a interesting like pyramid of communication where text messages or text messages or i messages are at the very top of that. Then come Slack messages. Then come, like, I guess, Twitter DMs or uh, Facebook messages, I guess. I don't know the last time someone sent me one of those. And then there's email. So if anybody listening has ever tried to send me an email, don't. <laughs> don't. Please don't. Please. That's so funny because, I, okay, so in my world, if it's a notification, it gets dealt with, whether it's like because i i hate unread notifications um so i have i don't have the red bubbles turned on on everything um but i like if i get an email i i need to do whatever needs to be done with it fairly Whoa, quickly. oh oh god i'm learning so much about you already oh no oh no oh no uh, okay hold all right all right all right yes. so First of all, give me give me a ballpark of the red notification badges that you have on your iPhone. Oh, zero. Okay. okay. So Hooray. you have zero like notification badges on your phone. D- do you literally deal with every notification as it comes in? Uh for the most part, what? yes. If I have notifications turned on, that means it's something that I need to know now. So like I don't have my my Instagram doesn't have okay. notifications. Okay. So it's not like I have notifications on everything and I deal with everything on a, like as it comes in. That's that's not how I work. But I also don't have my to-do list in notification forms. So like I never have you have three things to do in OmniFocus or hmm. anything like that. Interesting. Interesting. I'm I'm sort of like oh man I'm I'm trying to imagine a world like this where I have to respond to everything right away because my phone is constantly see I am not as popular oh, as no, you are no 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 so like <laughs> in that sense of the word so like I have my my level of notification replies is very is lower but like for texting or iMessage I can't have a text that's not replied to but what if I sent you that drives me crazy six questions that are all really complicated and what would happen like hey can we schedule does this time work for you also did you download can you download this software also uh have you seen the most recent episode of Queer Eye like there's just so there's so much like I would say yes. Hold on, let me do that. Oh, no. And absolutely, I've seen the whole season. No. <laughs> oh, I I mean that's why you're the unicorn and I'm the robot because <laughs> I just need to turn off my sense of <laughs> obligation sometimes, I guess. Yeah. Because I, I if if it is like oh man this is just so fucked up but if it is work when it, it, it if it's my day job like jobby job then people will get a notification yeah almost almost instantly but th- the problem with that is my job I love my jobby job um but you know I should probably respond to my wife first I should probably like yeah. wish my brother a happy birthday but uh, I just sort of turn that off from like 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. at night. Not that I'm necessarily working that whole time, but I feel like yeah. my brain is like switched on. And then eventually when the sun goes down, my brain can kind of switch off. Right. And see, my days are very much more flexible. Um, 
because I do work for myself. So I don't have, like, I'm always home, I except for when I'm, like, leaving for an appointment or whatever. But, like, I'm always connected. When I go to bed at, let's be honest, we're in bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock most nights, um, putting my daughter to bed. And we read for half an hour, so off electronics from 7.30 to 8. And then I'm usually reading for the next couple hours before oh. I go to sleep because I'm a Hashtag little old lady. Hashtag blessed, though. My God. <laughs> it's pretty great. But it's because I, I schedule my whole day. Like, I, I schedule my day around, like, getting to go to bed at 8. <laughs> I mean, that's my that's, life. <laughs> but the the thing that and it makes very it, it makes a ton of sense for like you as a as a human, but you have a child. <laughs> she enjoys sleep just as oh, much as God. I do. <laughs> Hashtag blessed all the way. Oh man. Yes. No, for that we definitely, definitely really lucked out. We like so for kindergarten, it was the last year that our school did um uh, half day kindergarten and we did afternoon because we knew that she would not want to wake up early enough to go to school half day kindergarten and what does yeah. that mean that means it's like a three and a half hour di- kindergarten oh class. yeah my school had that too and that's it. but my mom made me do the morning yeah oh boy <laughs> see i knew that my daughter would not handle mornings whatsoever and like now uh it's summertime and she'll sleep anywhere and 10 o'clock and that's with going to sleep at eight o'clock at night oh that's beautiful yeah i'm texting my mom right now (laughs) what was my bedtime when i was little this is for a very important (laughs) podcast please reply asap (laughs) oh my gosh that's funny (laughs) and that's and that's the thing wow i don't know if i've ever written asap in an email (laughs) or a uh or a text message ever so (laughs) that's really funny My mom is, I see those little text bubble, the dot, 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 the ellipses. Oh, whoever created the typing, like several people are typing. There is a special place in hell, I swear to God. (laughs) Uh. Yes, the stress. stress. She she says, I believe it was 9 p.m. But I now I'm like, wait, what age was that? Because like teenager, maybe. No. no that made it sound like i was a cool kid like out late at night no no no. i was reading under the blankets and like <laughs> doing homework <laughs> oh. oh yes yeah i was also so... not the cool kid i don't think i ever went to any actual like party parties other than like birthday parties at the house oh. and yeah I was not. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't do any parties at all. Um, Not even so much because I wasn't cool, because I wasn't. (laughs) 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 But but more like I, I went to a very strange Catholic high school in that the smarter the you were, like kind of the more like social clout you sort of had not because it's like if you were smart it, because it was a college it was like a hoity-toity college prep school right so it was like oh yeah the smart kids yeah they're where it at and like band was like cool <laughs> <laughs> in fact i was convinced to uh join band because we needed more flute players nice. so uh yeah 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 very uh, man i was great so great but uh, I remember there there was one situation. I might have talked about this on another show before, but there were a group of young women, and they called themselves the Sweet Sixteen, <laughs> and they had ma- <laughs> and they had matching Tiffany's bracelets. <laughs> and, wow. Oh God. And they like all got D- DUIs at like the same time and oh. like the same month. <laughs> and and this was one of those schools where you know you you know everything about everyone um and it was just you know the 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My mom said uh, my bedtime of 9 p.m. was until I was nine years old. So that that kind of checks out. Like 10 became 10 p.m., 11 became 11 p.m., 11 p.m., and then 13, by 13, I was just up until like 2 a.m. every morning. Gotcha. Um, I'm sure that that did not affect my brain development or <laughs> sexual <laughs> Well, that probably has way. to do with like... You're like a personality, not necessarily personality, but there's certain uh, some people are, you know, night owl, morning, early bird, whatever bird metaphor to call whatever it. Bird you choose <laughs> whatever to be. bird you choose to be. <laughs> uh, but like, I wonder how much of it is defined as a child versus like interesting innate nature versus nurture. Is that yeah, like if it's in your genes or if it's some or, or it's uh, yeah, like nature versus nurture. So if it's in your genes or if it's just a habit you develop, right? Because, hmm. well, and I'm thinking back, and so my mom is very much an early bird, and so is my dad, and I was very much an early bird. My brother, on the other hand, is definitely not, he was, was, and still is a night owl. So I don't know how much of that is just. Because I would think if it was nurture, he would be an early bird too. I mean, if it was nurture, I feel like everybody would go to bed when their parents wanted them to and then wake up at uh, a reasonable hour every day. Or uh, be, be, I don't know, because I'm, I'm thinking now there's no like correlation between my siblings and and my sleep schedule. Like some of, some of them are night owls, some of them. Oh, oh, interesting. Actually, I take it back. Um, my only other sibling who has glasses has a very similar sleep schedule to mine. Um, but he's also the only other one still in college. So huh. that could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that could. There's that. <laughs> a symptom of situation for that, oh. maybe. Interesting. Uh, so when do you start work? Uh well, I'm slowly getting back into more of my normal situation now that I am no longer pregnant, which kind of threw off everything. But normally I would wake up at six and do my morning stuff uh, about 6.30, 6.45 is when I'd sit down and start working. How do you how do you wake up? Is it an alarm situation? Is nope. it natural? It's is it natural. a screaming child? Nope. Wow. Just wake up natural. Whenever I wake up is when I wake up. I don't set an alarm. <sighs> um, although that backfired a couple weeks ago. No, I used to have uh, morning meetings with one of my clients every week at eight o'clock my time or eight thirty. Uh, my time, which I'm Pacific time. So I'm usually behind the rest of the world for a while. Um, mm. And I woke up at 8.15 and kind of had a freak out moment and then got on my, like ran to my computer. I barely peed. Uh, I was just like, oh my gosh, I got to get up. Ba barely peed? What well, does that mean? <laughs> like I, I, I was like, okay, I got to go. Okay, I'll go start my computer. Ran back, peed really quick. Like I meant to say, like barely. A exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I could only do this, but a little bit. Of <laughs> hey, having been pregnant now twice, you get really good at peeing in a cup. I will just say I that. I can imagine. Yes, I turned my computer on and then ran to go pee really quick. I meant to say I barely did my morning any sort of morning routine, so like I was still wearing my glasses. I hadn't changed out of pajamas like I was still like in bed and I my computer started up and I checked it and had a message to move the meeting to Thursday. And I was like, yes. <laughs> 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 so then I could have my morning routine the way I like it. So you were essentially saved by no bells. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> ding, 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 one. ding, ding. Mm -hmm. I don't have a bell to ring, but I would have rung it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have almost the exact opposite situation in that um I go to sleep typically either playing um honestly depending on how 
stressed I am, I will be reading a book or playing a video game because if if I've if my day has gone as planned, um, I'm I'm like okay, all of my ones and zeros are in an order. Great, I can read my book. My Kindle is here, perfect. But I still do like fall asleep. I, I I can't. I, I I just can't fall asleep naturally. It eventually the Kindle will hit my face and then fall to the floor. And hopefully I get a good night's sleep. Or if I'm anxious, I need to play a, a video game just to keep my um, hands and brain busy. So right. I'm not, you know, thinking about how uh, no- nothing matters and I'm a terrible person and uh, and all of that. And then on top of that, I uh, also have, uh, <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's so bad. Uh, I also will have something playing in the background, typically Golden Girls, because- nice. It's it's kind of like like ambient music at this point because I've seen all of it so much. So I guess it's the this is like the least robotic thing about me because I can't I don't have an off switch. It's it's like I basically need to let my batteries run out, and then <laughs> the next morning it's like I, I it it's a hard reboot. Like I have two. I'm trying to get better about this, but I have two alarms. The, the, what's considered, I think, the um, like aspirational alarm that's set, set for six thirty. That that doesn't happen. It it becomes seven thirty. Um, yeah. typically because I don't start work until ten because most of the time we're I'm working with people on the uh, West Coast. Mm. But yeah, what well, what would you? What are like some hot tips about waking up on time? Other than other than you know having a healthy sleep schedule or is that all there is to it uh i wish i had hot tips Mm. in that it's just something that well okay so i don't have much anxiety over things like at all um i'll have occasional situational anxiety or stressors um but my my daily anxiety is really low uh, however, if I have something scheduled the next morning I that needs to be done, I will set alarms and I'm still usually awake before the alarms because that like I need to be at work. I need to be working. I need to do my stuff to have my shit together. But I also am getting, you know, 10 to 12 hours of sleep. Oh my god! And it's solid. Like I'm, I'm asleep oh through the night. God. Oh my god! I didn't even think about the caveat of cats crawling in the bed and me waking up. Yeah, like three see, times every night. I don't wake up with that. Uh, I will wake up. I do now. Currently, will wake up sometime between three and five o'clock because I have to pump to drain oh, the boobs. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was like, what the... F- what am I pumping? Like, yes. Are you going out to a well? What's happening? <laughs> well, no. you know, we, out mean- here in Oregon, <laughs> we travel via covered wagon <laughs> and we still get all of our water from a hand pump. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for someone who... Not, not, I, I, I am a person who could potentially get pregnant, but still, I don't know when someone says pump, that's not immediately what my brain. Goes to. Well, no, totally, totally rational and normal uh, reaction. It's just, it's something that's constantly on my mind nowadays. That it's, it's. I just say pump, and people. Like so, I had to replace my Apple Watch because it died. Oh no! Uh, and it was oh, no. it was horrible. So I now have a uh, Series Three. Um, and so I went into the store, and it my Series Two. It had a crack on it as well as it just stopped like charging at all. And if I'm gonna pay two hundred and fifty dollars, why not upgrade and then see if my dad wants? Eh, long story, it doesn't matter. I cracked the screen when I was giving birth. So, like, at least I have a good story <laughs> on it. I'm, I'm sorry. That's the best, like, tech birth story. Right? <laughs> right? So, I I have no filter, and I will talk to anybody about anything. And so, this poor dude that I'm talking to, like, that happened. And... Uh, I mentioned something about I can't even remember now why I even brought up pumping because why who who would bring that up to some random dude 
at the Verizon store <laughs> that you've been talking to for three seconds. Like it was, it was, and afterwards I was just like, that was, that was, t- wow. I'm sorry. Well, I, I mean, were you like, oh man, my nipples hurt. Or like, <laughs> I was just trying to think. Because- no, it was more like, okay, I have to go. I have to go pump, I think was what it was. Cause I had been out and about, I had had lunch with people, um, and it had been a couple hours and I already, I always, I, I now always carry a manual pump just in case in an emergency. Um, because the pressure and the pain is something that's completely indescribable to anyone that hasn't experienced it before. Oh, like it's, yeah. it's intense. And so when you go past a certain amount of time, it's not fun. I can't. Like, I can't imagine, which makes me think that you should have an out for everything. Like, <laughs> like, oh, I, I, I need, hey, Verizon guy, I need this fixed now. Like, or I'm going to burst. Like, do right? you want to see it? Like, <laughs> leaking happen? Like, I, like, hey. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and I have, I always, so I, my supply is really high. So I produce a lot of milk. I should be a cow, not a unicorn, basically. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I have liners that I have in my bra to collect liquid because it leaks. Interesting. Yeah. Man, this is a whole things. world that I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're going we're going to have a kid episode at some point. And and, you know, that's another thing that keeps me up at night is like, oh, God, I'm, I'm not qualified at all to be a mother. We're going to be the worst parents in the world. Well, no, my, my wife's going to be amazing, but I'm going to be a disaster. And, you know, but then I play Alto's Odyssey for an hour and <laughs> calm my brain because the only thing that happens in that game that's bad is um, a lemur catches you or well, you like fall down a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you can start over again. So it's totally fine. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And I just. Yeah, I and, like talking about your filter or lack there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess I have sort of a similar thing, but only because I, my brain does like doesn't compute like, oh, this isn't like not that this isn't appropriate for this situation, but it, uh, I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to think of an example that's more more of like I I. I, well, <laughs> I tend to ramble if anybody who's ever heard m- me talk ever w- will know this and I stammer or I'll start going into like I, I was trying to explain something today and started talking about um, a Drobo and then a NAS and then USB-C. And it was it was to one of my interns and he looked at me like I was speaking another <laughs> language, which you kind of are. So, right. Yeah. When you start getting technical. But he's my tech intern. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, he should. <laughs> it was not. It was not his fault. I, I, I threw a lot at him in a very short amount of time. Gotcha. And by short amount of time, I, I do mean about you know seventy five seconds. Okay, that's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> he's wonderful. I just I was like, okay, I, I, and I think honestly, this is this is the first time I'm at at my jobby job that I'm having someone work under me for an extended period of time like I that's what she said uh, mm. (laughs) 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 oh boy and to be continued